Welcome to Life Devotions. Thank you for joining me today. Fifth warning, pursue peace and holiness is the title of this devotion. In the book of Hebrews, we have five specific warnings that charge us to keep ourselves focused upon the love of Christ and His great work as our great high priest in our hearts, revealing in us His heavenly life and bringing us through His indwelling presence into His holy heavenly life, that as He lives, so we may live in this world, as John would say in 1 John 5 verse 19 or verse 18. And here in Hebrews chapter 12, I want to start reading from verse 14. Yes. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Look carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up causing trouble, and by this many become defiled, lest there be any fornicator or profane person the word profane there is godless person like Esau who for a morsel of food sold his birthright for you know that afterwards when he wanted to inherit the blessing he was rejected for he found no place for repentance though he sought it diligently with tears you have not come to the mountain that may be touched and that burned with fire and to the blackness and darkness and tempest and to the sound of the trumpet and the voice of words so that those who heard it begged that the word should not be spoken to them anymore for they could not endure what was commanded and if so much as the beast would touch the mountain it would be stoned or shot with arrows and so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I'm exceedingly afraid and trembling, but you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, to the heavenly Jerusalem, to the innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly in the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God who is the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks of better things than that of Abel. You see, we are not, um, we are not having to endure the confrontation that the children of Israel did when they had an encounter with God. So terrifying, so terrifying that Moses, who was used to living in the glory of God, could not bear it. And that the people shrank with horror because of the glory and the holiness and majesty and splendor that was being revealed to them. We have come to the holy dwelling place of God, to the church of the firstborn, to Jesus, the mediator, who is interceding within us with his heavenly nature as the Prince of Peace in the most holy of holies to which he draws us into a life separated from ungodliness and uncleanness and who infuses within us that holy fire and passion not to be like Esau who sold his inheritance and birthright for the moment of pleasure. And perhaps that is one of these strong thoughts that come here and yet there can be so many others that the Lord will speak through to you to say, come on. Friends, I often have prayed that I am not an Esau. I will not give up what God has given me for the moment of pleasure. And at times, maybe I was on the edge of it and Satan thought his hook of temptation was deep enough to hold me back. But even in the weeping and crying, and, and, and rem lamenting and, and mourning over me, yielding also in the slightest
quickest manner to the temptation was I given the way of escape through the blood of the Lamb, through the power of His intercession to escape that snare, that hook of temptation in my flesh, in my conscience, in my soul. And oh, I'm so grateful that Jesus has kept me all these years and that He keeps keeping me, but not just me only, but all of us who love Him and are called into his purpose, called according to his purpose, no matter what we're going through, can see him working good in our lives, his goodness, his mercy. Oh, dear friends, I charge you in the Lord, pursue peace and holiness for yourself in the presence of the Lord. I do not like to live with my soul all, ra all ravaged by the world pulling on it. I don't want to know that. I don't want to live in the torment. I don't have this. I don't have that. I, I'm bored. I, 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 no, I want to live in peace. I want to live in the joy of His blessed presence. I want His peace, Philippians chapter 4, to guard my heart and mind. I want to keep my mind set upon Him so He keeps me in perfect peace, uh, Isaiah 26, verse 2. I want to live in that peace that surpasses all understanding, guarding my heart and mind day and night that I'm at rest, I'm at peace. I want to be able to look at Virginia and that she doesn't feel I'm driven by lusts or driven by complaining or unfulfillment and that she kind of goes, oh, what am I going to do to make Robert happy? I don't want that in my home. I don't want that in my home. I don't want Virginia to look at me like she's not good enough by just being the amazing, beautiful person she is. No, I want peace, I want holiness. I want to live in that undefiled, blameless wonder of Christ living in me. And friends, the Lord also wants us to live in this kind of peace towards one another, you see, and how we need this. How can I find this, Pastor? Well, one scripture that you've heard me mention often and that helps me, and I'm going to go ahead and read it even though I know it by heart. It's right here in 2 Corinthians 5.14. That verse so helps me. For the love of Christ compels us. That word compel, actually, you could read in another translation as constrains. That's a different thought. And another translation, you can read that same word as contains. So compels, constrains, contains. It's the same word, but it has these three different thoughts to it. Compels, moves me, constrains, holds me back, contains, keeps me. The love of Christ is the secret, really, for to pursue peace and holiness. The love of Christ within ourselves, I think, well, I know about myself that I've sometimes said, Lord, please help me. I feel I can be so indifferent, so idle, so spiritually lazy. And maybe you, you say, well, Pastor, you get up to pray. You read your Bible. You're not spiritually lazy. Maybe compared to some, I'm not, but my goodness, to others, I am. If I think about Hudson Taylor, who would get up seven times a day to pray. I am lazy. Okay, maybe I get up and pray for two minutes at one o'clock and two minutes at three o'clock, and then I get up at five or so and have my time with the Lord. But folks, compared to Hudson Taylor, that was, that was without question falling short. That was not showing devotion. That was not being fervent for the Lord. So we can't compare ourselves to people that do less than us to think that we're better than that we're okay, no. It needs to be the Holy Spirit in us that we yield to that yearning, to that hungering, to that groaning that Romans 8, 25 talks about, 26. That, that, that yielding to the Holy Spirit who knows what is the intercession of Christ for us. The love of Christ, His intercession, compels, constrains, contains me because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Those two little verses the Lord has used often to constrain me, 
I had this about movie theaters. Every time I would go to a movie theater, it's a long, long time ago, it's like I left who I am in the spirit. And the Heavenly Father knew that about my nature. And he said, Robert, for you, no movie theater. And, and I'm not saying this, that you should never go to a movie theater, not at all. But for me, for Robert, no, don't go there because it takes you over and it blinds you to me and it separates you from me, so no. And it just for me, that was the discipline that the Lord needed for me. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't yield to the groaning, the yearning, the interceding of the Spirit in me to let that go <coughs> until one night after I'd gone anywhere, the Spirit came upon me so mightily as if I had committed the unpardonable sin. It struck me to the core of my nature and I went before the Lord. And this strange prayer came out of me, Lord, why are you so upset with me? It is only a movie. In other words, why are you making such a big deal about me? Me going to a movie theater and this scripture the Holy Spirit spoke to me the love of Christ compels me that if one died for all therefore all died therefore we should live no longer and I wept dear friends oh how I wept because that habit of mine was undermining my peace in God and my holiness in the knowledge of him and God didn't want that undermined in me for a split second. Neither does he want anything else to undermine your nature in him and his nature in you. And so I tell you, that liberated me. That love of Christ compelled me. And I could not go back to it. And for a little while, it pulled on me a little. And I, I go, no, 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 no. Now it never pulls in me. It's dead. It's dead and buried. And Christ's death is to liberate you from what would separate you. From what would separate you from living in that peace. From what would separate you from living in that grace. Now, lastly, but not least, if we go to Ephesians chapter 4, please. Look at verse 1 through 7. Therefore, I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing one another in love, and endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Therefore, there is one body, one spirit, just as we're called into one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all, through all, and in you all. And each one of you grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. And he says, God is working in you this great calling of your communion in his rest, in his peace, and in his holiness. Now, show forth that phenomenal calling that you have been walking in fellowship with the Father and the Father with you in your communion with one another. Hold that spirit of peace towards each other. Hold that holiness toward each other. Holiness will give you divine boundaries that the natural realm would not realize is needed. Holiness will hold you in a holy boundary that will not allow affections to, to, to develop that do not belong. I have affections with my dear wife, Virginia, that I would never, ever have with anybody else, God forbid, and nor, I, nor do I want to know it. I don't even want to know such a connection. I, I wouldn't want to know any kind of flirting or anything, any connecting in the soul that is familiar on a level that doesn't belong, except to my, my wife and I. Even in our marriage, we walk in an integrity of love and respect for each other. Uh, but friends, holiness will hold you in that perfect communion with the heavenly father that sin would never be able to separate and nothing in this world could separate it will hold you in that rest and peace with god that you can have that towards others and not allow the enemy to come in with harshness and cruelness and hatred to separate no that peace will stay masterful in those moments of conflict. Oh, how I see that, especially in Virginia. My goodness, does that woman have authority 
in the Prince of Peace, or I should say how the Prince of Peace has authority in her to hold her when the conflict comes harshly and cruelly against her. My goodness, I've seen her hold by that spirit of peace and not allow the war, the war that comes against her to, to break through and to overcome and to deprive that, her of that peace. Know how she holds in and how we keep harnessing and strengthening ourselves in, in, in Him to be the Prince of Peace in our marriage, in our relationship towards others. Folks, there's been times where the devil's tried everything to provoke us with offense against the shortcomings and failings of others. No. Jesus paid for it all. No, we take up our cross and deny ourselves and follow the master in his love for others. No, my dear friends, no, we will not allow Satan to use the failings and weaknesses of others to employ us to condemn them. No, God forbid. We represent the love of our Savior who gave himself as a sacrifice for sin to save sinners and to love them and to redeem them from the power of sin. And we hold to that. That is that kind of peace and holiness, my dear friends, that is alien to the world, but is heavenly blessings coming from above consistently and constantly into us through Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a good day.